Do you like butterflies? Do you like cringy teenage romance storylines? Are you mentally challenged? If you answered yes to all these three questions, then you'll probably love this episode of Fear the Walking Dead. If not, then you'll hate it as much as I did. This video does contain spoilers for the entire episode, so please do keep that in mind. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. After watching an episode about a dude who plays the bagpipes, I really didn't think that Fear the Walking Dead could get any stranger. How wrong I was. This episode introduces us to the 15-year-old Ali, as if the show didn't have enough characters already, and Ali is a dude who lives at Strand's tower who wants to be a ranger, and Strand gives him the very important task of catching butterflies. Yes, you heard me correctly, catching butterflies. I guess Strand must really love Animal Crossing. Victor Strand is nowhere to be seen this episode. He actually hasn't appeared on the show yet so far this half a season. You know, for a dude who said that he was never going to leave the tower, he sure does go outside a lot. Anyway, we get some wonderful dialogue from Howard as he's talking to Ali about why he wants him to catch butterflies. Howard says, This is about how you see the world. They all started as a caterpillar. They started as one thing before they came something else. Something better. I wish I was deaf like Paul in the last episode so I wouldn't have to hear this shite. Ali runs into Charlie whilst he's hunting for butterflies and what a surprise, Howard appears again out of nowhere. Like honestly, the dude is a magician, he just appears everywhere. But anyway, to cut a long story short, he takes Charlie back to the tower and then Charlie bargains with him because he wants some elevator parts because apparently the elevator is broken. But then how the hell does Wendell get to the roof when the fucking elevator is broken? How, how does that make any sense? But anyway, yeah, apparently the elevator is broken and they need parts. So Charlie's like, right, send me. I'll get these parts because apparently I know how to, to fix elevators. Apparently, you know, uh, however old she is, 13-year-old kid, as it's revealed in this episode, knows how to fix elevators. I'll do it, I'll do it, yeah. Okay, whatever. Ali accompanies Charlie on this journey because Howard wants Ali to spy on Charlie to make sure that she's not up to something. And he has some wise words to, uh, to give to Ali before he departs. Howard says, it's what separates the caterpillars from the butterflies. What? I get that butterflies are a theme throughout this episode. And I've heard of the phrase, it's what separates the men from the boys, right? So I guess that's what they were kind of going for with this phrase. It's what separates the caterpillars from the butterflies. But you can't just replace, you know, men and boys with two random words and expect the saying to sound as cool, you know, as, as it did originally. Expect it to mean something. Because saying it's what separates the men from the boys is saying, you know, this will find out who the men are. This will find out who's tough, who's strong, who's capable of doing this. Saying it separates caterpillars from butterflies, what, what does that even fucking mean? Does, does that mean if you if you accomplish this task, you can fly? You're like a butterfly? Is that a particularly a good thing to be compared to? You know, to be compared to a butterfly? Doesn't make any sense. It's what separates the spoon from the fork. It's what separates the milk from the cereal. It's what separates... The washing from the washing machine. Ali and Charlie set out to find the elevator parts and they have to take shelter in this bowling alley because they spot the stalkers up ahead. And I mean, this may sound really mean. And I don't mean it to be mean. You know, I don't want to be horrible about, you know, young actors. But the dude who plays Ali is just really not a good actor. Or maybe he is a good actor and, you know, he just realised how shit Fear the Walking Dead was and just phoned it in. But... He is awful this episode, he just has this kind of same vacant expression on his face the entire, you know, the entire way through the episode. Just like there's, you know, nothing going on upstairs. It just looks like he's zoning out during every conversation. I mean, he looks more depressed than I am. And that's saying something. And just listen to this line delivery and try not to laugh. Stay with me, please. Stay with me, please. Like, I don't know, something about it just didn't sound convincing to me at all. I'm sorry, but this dude is just not cut out for acting based on based on this episode. Okay, that 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 was harsh. Now I I don't that I didn't want to be harsh. That was harsh. Okay, take I take that back. But he does suck in this episode. I'm sorry. He he's he's really bad. So it turns out that this episode is a love story about Charlie and Ali. Charlie and Ali fall in love with each other after knowing each other for like five minutes, and I understand it's the apocalypse and. You know, I understand teenage hormones and, you know, these things can happen quite quickly, but 
it's like they're speed running their entire relationship. I mean, you know, if this carries on, by the next episode, Charlie will be fucking pregnant. Like, they, how, they've known each other for five minutes and suddenly they're so attached to one another. It's just bizarre. At one point, Ali leaves Charlie to die in an elevator before then changing his mind and saving her. And she, like, gets out the elevator and gives him a kiss. Why are you kissing the dude? He need to lift you to die. You should be fucking slapping him around the face. You shouldn't be kissing him. Oh, thank you for nearly letting me die, but then changing your mind. Oh, I love you. What the hell? But anyway, Charlie then drops to the floor after the kiss because I guess the kiss was so bad. Okay, it's actually because of radiation poisoning or some shit. It's like the writers just make up the rules in terms of radiation as it goes along. I mean, plenty of characters have been exposed to radiation, you know, since it's been a thing in The Walking Dead. But, you know, this amount of radiation is suddenly enough to, you know, knock Charlie on the floor. Whatever. They, they just make up the rules as they go along. Anyway, I want to talk about something that happens prior to this scene because it's just so hilariously bad. So Ali is trying to like get in the building uh, that Charlie goes into where the elevator parts are and the scavengers or no sorry the stalkers turn up behind him and what Ali does is he opens the door which lets walkers out and there's like I don't know three or four stalkers with like heavy you know but look like assault rifles machine guns I'm not I'm not a gun expert I know I did but they look like you know guns that could fire ammo quite quickly and they've got armor on and they're just taken out by a couple of walkers. Like, you're telling me these guys have guns, and they couldn't handle a couple of walkers. Also, they were on, like, a, a like a narrow path leading to this door, and all they needed to do was turn around, go the other way, or back up a bit and start shooting the walkers. Instead, they just stand there, oh, no, the walkers are getting me. It's ridiculous. How did they die in such a pathetic way? Ah, oh, so bad. After passing out, Charlie is taken to the tower where she's diagnosed with radiation poisoning by June and she's, you know, given like her own little room. And then Ali goes in and like colours up to her. And I mean, I don't know anything about radiation poisoning, but if someone I knew had radiation poisoning, I don't think I'd be go up to them cuddling them and, and getting in bed with them. If you've been exposed to radiation, I probably wouldn't want to be getting near you. Ali then takes Charlie to a room which he's filled with butterflies because previously in this episode, Charlie remarks that, you know, she didn't like the fact that the butterflies he was collecting were being stored in like these jars because, oh, they, they should be able to live free. So Ali releases these butterflies in this room, you know, to make her happy. And then we get like a really cringy scene where they're dancing and kissing and like a montage. And it's just some kind of like Twilight level shit. It's, it just made me want to puke. It's really bad. I know some people have commented on the uh, the age of the actors as well because the dude who plays Ali is 19 and the girl who plays Charlie is 15 in real life. And, uh, you know, even though the uh, the age of consent in the UK is 16, this would still technically be underage and um, still kind of weird. I mean, if I knew a 19-year-old who was kissing a 15-year-old, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you not dating someone your own age? You know, that's just weird. But... um. I don't know, I, I guess if, you know, the, the both the actors agreed to it, it, it was only a little kiss, it wasn't like they were having sex, and I guess if the Guardians agreed to it, then I guess you could say, okay, it's acting, forget about it. But I don't know, I also, I just kind of think this controversy could have been avoided if they just got someone younger to play Ali. You know, they could have got someone the same age as Charlie to play him if they wanted to set up a romance. They didn't have to get a dude who was four years older than her when, you know, Charlie is only 15, the, act the actress who plays her. Bit strange, in my opinion. Also kind of strange that Charlie is 13 in the show. You know, when she said, oh, no, I think she come out and said I'm 12, but I'm like 13 next week or something like that. And um, I was looking at Charlie. And I was thinking, there's no way this girl's 12. Like, I, I, you know, I actually thought she was older than 15, really, in real life. So uh, the actress does look older than 15. But, yeah, I don't know why they made Charlie a 13-year-old in the show. They could have just made her 15. If they've already made Ali 15 on the show as well, why not just make him the same age? You know, instead of 13, 15, I don't know. Just a bit strange, but um, yeah, there you go. So it turns out the entire reason why Charlie went to the tower in the first place was because Morgan wanted her to turn off the beacon to the tower so that the walkers would disperse, I guess, so that they could then break in and uh, rescue rescue Grace. So what happens next is the, uh, the smitten Ali goes to the roof to turn off the beacon for her. And uh, he's then caught by Howard. 
and uh, Howard throws him over the roof and he's dead. And, you know, Fear has a habit of doing this, introducing characters in, in one episode just to kid him. We've had Ali. Last week we had Paul in the season premiere. We had, uh, oh, I can't even remember his name, Alicia's boyfriend, Will. You know, introduces us characters just to kill him off in the same episode. It's kind of pointless, really. You just, you know, you, you can't get attached to people. You don't care about them because you know they're going to die anyway. Um... I mean, not that I was, you know, a fan of this dude, you know, by any means, as as you probably guessed by by me talking about him. But um, yeah, still feels kind of pointless to introduce this guy, go to all this trouble to introduce him just to kill him in the same episode. Charlie sees him fall, you know, past the window in the room that she's in, you know, and he screams. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just messed up in the head, but I kind of found it funny just him going Aah! and her watching. Like it was just, I don't know, it just seemed kind of comical. And um, I feel like the only reason he he's killed is because this gives more reason, you know, as to why the protagonists want to kill Strand. He killed Ali, now we have to go to war. It's the same reason Will was killed. He killed Will, now we have to take out Strand. You know, it's just a really lazy way of uh, trying to give justification for the character's war with Strand, in my opinion. And, you know, I don't care, because I don't care about this guy, I don't care about Will, so it still does nothing, you know, to change my opinion about this war with Strand. I still think it's pointless. It's not, it's not going to... Make me change my mind. Oh, Howard's so nasty. He killed Ali. Ugh, I don't fucking care, man. I feel like I say this every episode. It's like my catchphrase. I don't care. I say it all the time. But it's true. I don't care. I mean, if he had thrown off Daniel or Luciana, for instance, that would have been shocking. That would have been. That would have made me think, ah, these guys do need to be taken out because they killed someone I like. But uh, who cares? I don't care about Ali. You know, the only thing that I liked about this episode really is that john senior is uh you know he's up to something and he's he's uh you know he's kind of sucking up to howard and uh playing it playing against them because at the start of the episode yeah he was fully unlike team howard and i was thinking hang on the last time i saw you you wanted to escape this place and said to june that you couldn't be here so why now are you suddenly agreeing with him but at the end of the episode you know he says to june oh, i need to make him believe that i'm on his side and you know so i can get his ear and he's going to try something so at least you know one of the characters has a brain and is thinking outside the box. So I liked that, but the rest of the episode is utter garbage. It's utter, utter garbage. Who thought we would need a story about Charlie having a love interest, only for him to die in the same episode anyway? Absolute waste of time. Absolute waste of time. It's maybe one of the worst episodes of Fear. You know, one of the worst episodes of the entire show. I fucking hated it. I fucking hated it. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, episode 11 review should be up uh, in the next couple of days shouldn't be too long I have watched that and I will say it is a big improvement on this episode it's probably the best episode so far of the season but it does have a lot of problems so yeah that, that review will be up shortly and um, yeah let me know your thoughts and I shall see you all very soon take care goodbye